Remember many years back when I did a review of Athena on the NES? That was back when I was trying to do the whole angry reviewer shtick like everyone else was and I was shitting on the game. Well, I figured I would give Athena another chance, but this time I'd start with the arcade version, which was developed and published by SNK. It was originally released in 1986, and of course it was later ported to the NES, Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, and Amstrad CPC. Now, Athena is a 2D side-scrolling platformer where you play as the goddess of wisdom known as Athena, and she has grown tired of her life within a castle. She wants adventure. She wants to enjoy her life and go fucking crazy. So she ventures out into the fantasy world where strange and evil creatures will attack you at every chance you can. But you can pick up weapons along the way to help take them down. And some of the weapons are a ball and chain, bow and arrow, and of course a badass sword. You will go through eight levels and at the end face the ruthless evil emperor Dante and free the fantasy world. And no, it's not Dante from Devil May Cry. Now you start out the game unarmed and nearly nude. So Princess Athena must fend off monsters almost naked right at first, but you can collect shields and armor to cover your body. You can use certain weapons like a hammer and break through stone blocks, which sometimes reveals armor, magic, and other items. While this game is mostly a platformer, there is an RPG element to it, which is cool. Also, you will need to use certain weapons, magic, and so on to defeat the final boss, Dante. One thing about Athena, it pulls no punches. It allows you to easily pick up weapons and so on, and you have a stats bar on the side that will make you better, but if you don't have a shield, you have some enemies that will just kick your shit in, especially the dudes with the bow and arrows. They just keep launching arrows at you and not give a fuck. The graphics for Athena in the arcade are good. I think the game looks really nice for its time. First of all, the game is very colorful, ranging from the world, the characters, and enemy sprites. Everything flows damn well. The level design is nice, and you can take a few different routes to get through the levels, too, which is cool. The game doesn't slow down, glitch, or flicker, which is a huge plus. Nothing to really complain about here. Now, when it comes to the music, it's alright. I wouldn't say it's the best music I've ever heard in a video game. It's just not something I find to be amazing. It's not mangled shit through together, at least I don't think so, but I think it could be a lot better. The sound effects are nice, seem a little bit louder than the music, which after a while could get annoying, but it's nothing that ruins the game. The controls are not bad. Now granted, at first when you don't have power-ups and armor, you are virtually powerless, and you even move a little slow. Not only that, you can't jump worth a shit, but moving around is easy, attacking is easy, and so is jumping. So overall, the controls are very responsive, it's just the gameplay might hinder them a bit until you get power-ups and so on. And it's doing that for a reason, so I have no complaints there. Athena for the arcade is pretty damn tough, but I like it. I wouldn't say it's the best arcade game I've ever played. It's not awful. The gameplay is fun and interesting, especially for an arcade game. The graphics are nice. The game looks well done. The music is okay. Could be better. And the sound effects are not bad. The controls are responsive, but might throw people off because of how weak your character is in the beginning. I think one thing that will turn people away from this game is the difficulty, and I understand that to a point, but at the same time, I enjoy games that are difficult, even if they do kick my ass. Now this review is not over yet. I want to talk about the NES version of Athena, which was developed and published by SNK and was released in 1987, a year later from the original. This is pretty much the same game as the arcade version, but maybe a slightly different level layout, so I'm just going to focus on the graphics, music, sound effects, and controls. The graphics this time around are definitely not as good as the arcade version, but this is limited to 8-bit graphics for the NES. It definitely takes a little bit out, same with the sprites and so on. The game is colorful, and I don't think the game looks bad or anything like that. Now, the game does run into some flickering issues and even some slight slowdowns, which can be annoying. Other than that, I'm not going to say that's a huge flaw. The music this time around, a little more annoying than anything. Is it the worst I've ever heard on the NES? Far from it. But it's not amazing, that's for sure. The sound effects are okay. Now, where this port suffers is probably the controls. This time around, I don't feel they handle as good as the arcade version. I think they are slow at responding, and maybe that's because the game has, at times, a lot of sprites on screen, and that could slow shit down a little bit. Maybe I'm just horrible at this game, though. But at the same time, even moving around seems a little bit shitty. Same with attacking. Athena for the NES has some issues, and I think a lot of that is because of the limitations. Is the game a piece of shit? Actually, the game is very much playable if you look past the issues. Personally, I'd rather play the arcade version, but for a NES port, the graphics are not bad other than some flickering. The music could be better. The controls are slow at responding to a point, and at times the game does seem unfair. I will say that, but it could be a lot worse than this. Now, if you want to play the arcade version, you can get it on MAME, although if you have the SNK 40th Anniversary Collection that came out for the Nintendo Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4, the arcade version is on there along with the NES port. Back in 2011, the arcade version was released on the PlayStation Network as well. Also, Athena has appeared in some SNK fighting games as a secret character. The NES port is 30% rare, and prices are $14.75, $8.47, $15, $10.19, $9.97, and even $60 for a completed box, as well as $49.99. 
Personally, I don't see the point of owning a complete in-box, or if you can find one cheaper than that, a lot cheaper, then go for it. But the other prices for a cart only, those are pretty decent, so I can't complain about that. Now, Athena wasn't the only game in the series. There is a handful of them. There is a sequel titled Psycho Soldier, which was released in the arcade. Then there is a spin-off known as Athena Awakening from the Ordinary Life on the PlayStation. And then a mobile game known as Athena Full Throttle. Surprisingly, there is not a new game in the series, which I figured there would be in Japan as these games did pretty decent, I assume. When it comes to the sequels at a later time, I might review them, at least one or two of them, before I die. I hope you enjoyed this review of Athena for the arcade and NES. Thanks for watching.